Monday it seems to, or at least uh, about that, and this week it's a little bit later. But uh, uh, we'll observe it today. If you would uh, open your Bibles with me here this morning. I want to go to uh, a book in the Old Testament, which is Joshua. We'll go to Joshua chapter 3 to start with. Uh, Joshua is full of a lot of uh, uh, maneuvers uh, uh, militarily for the children of Israel. And it shows a lot of, of the Lord's intervention as they uh, uh, went throughout conquering and getting to the promised land. So there's a lot of good stuff here in, in the book of Joshua concerning how a veteran should be observed as, as well as uh, uh, the, 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 the command to go forth and, and also uh, the faith that it took to carry out certain things. It was amazing uh, to see this at work. But Joshua chapter 3, I want to start with verse 1. Joshua rose up early in the morning and he set out from Akedah Grove and came to the Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God, and the priests and the Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place, go after it, yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure, and do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. Now, it, it, it's, it's not quite the same in our world today to have the Ark of the Covenant lead us through military maneuvers or our own personal endeavors to follow the Lord. But you can see from this moment how important it was to have the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant represented God's Word. And it represented that God was with them. So therefore, this was a very special thing to have the ark and go before them. And the Lord instructed them to go where it was going. So a very important uh, 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 fact about uh, Joshua and the children of Israel being led by the ark of the covenant, just like Moses was with the presence of the Lord. And just like in the wilderness, the ark of the covenant went with them. So we have to understand the importance of it. But you know, in our world today, we don't have the same kind of leading. Think about the, the desire. Think about the trust. Think about when you can see the ark, how that would make them feel. Because, you know, just think of how they were empowered by the, the very visual of the Ark of the Covenant. As I think about it often with how over the years in, in the world wars and, and uh, more uh, uh, localized conflicts, uh, Korea, uh, Vietnam, and all the other ones recently that have, that have happened. Think about the men and women who uh, were involved in these maneuvers. What, what it took to keep in mind, to stay focused, to trust the leaders, to trust those who were uh, uh, sending them to do certain specific things. And I found uh, this story. It was in the Battle uh, of uh, Argonne in, in October of 1918. So that's going back a ways. I don't know if anybody here can attest to that. The Allies were attempting to break the German lines when a cor corporal, na uh, his name was Alvin York, and uh, his men uh, uh, come upon, they were surprised by, some well hidden machine guns that were on higher ground. And as he wrote about this event, he said, the Germans got us. They got us right smart. And I'm telling you, they were shooting straight. And he says, American soldiers just went down like long grass before a mowing machine at home. So he, he's, he's, he's establishing they, they, they were losing men left and right, and these machine guns were, were taking them out left and right. And he goes on to say that his men, 
backed off and they, they, they made a different maneuver. They said they went around behind the German lines and they overrun a unit. Now, again, put yourself in that situation. To see all this happening, what would be your first reaction? To get out of there, okay? To run for home, as many would try. But, of course, in military maneuvers, you're not taught to, to do that. So they figured out a different way, and they decided they would try a different maneuver. And it says they, they, they uh, uh, got behind the, the German lines, and they overran a unit, and he said they captured the enemy. Suddenly there was a new machine gun fire from atop the ridge, and, and he says there were six Americans went down. York was in command, and he exposed, uh, but cool, and it began to shoot. All I could do was watch the Germans off uh, uh, just as fast as I could. Touch the Germans off. He was speaking about uh, shooting them, and, and, and their unit uh, began to mow down the Germans. He says, all the time they kept yelling at them to come down. I didn't want to kill any more of them I, than, I, than, than I had to. Obviously, putting in that position, you would begin to wonder. A German officer tried to empty his gun into York while York fired. He failed, but York succeeded. The Germans did finally surrender, and York and his small squad marched 132 Germans back to the American lines. That's just one of many stories of men and women who, who stuck to the course, who stayed the course, who, who saw what they needed to do. And, and just like this event, what if they'd have ran? What if they'd have just surrendered? Then this, this complete turnaround wouldn't have happened. But York, his, he, he was given a medal of honor. The citation called him fearless, daring, and heroic. And the point I want to make is, do you know that this man, Mr. York, was not born a hero? He wasn't born a hero. Just like any hero, they're not born. Alvin York was born in 1887 into a Tennessee family, a farming family. They didn't even have much. But no one else did either. So they really didn't know that it was so bad for them because everybody was the same. He was the third of 11 children and had an average life for that time and place. Then World War I came and he experienced a crisis of conscience in his own mind. He began to stir within himself whether to fight. He states that his mother was an evangelical uh, a church goer his church that he attended. They tugged him toward more, more or less as, as he, he writes, a pacifist thinking. And that pacifist thinking was more of don't fight. Just stay at home. Don't, don't get involved kind of thing. He says, I didn't know what to do. I'm telling you there was a war going on inside of me, he said. I, don't know, I didn't know which side to lean on. So I was really bothered. You see, I state this because, again, there's a struggle to, to carry out, to persevere, to even put yourself on the field, so to speak. The point is, the secret behind every hero is that heroes become heroes internally before their exploits are displayed externally. You see, Mr. York wasn't born a hero. But he became a hero. But all of this began to well up within him. So therefore, before he could even be, be noticed as a hero, and it was displayed as a hero, he had to become on inside first. He had to have within his own life the desire. He had to, for, had to have the forethought and the commitment and character. So he, he, he needed to, to experience these things. His doubts about what to do were eventually eclipsed by faith and trust. And a hero was revealed. You see, that's, that, that, that is how we should look at so many men and women who've served in the military, who are serving in the military, because there, there's a whole lot of unknown. 
as many of you can attest. A lot of unknown things that are happening and you question what to do, how's it going to work out? You see with Joshua, who was the leader of this untested army, they've got doubts as well. For them to possess this promised land that they never knew anything about, to win their independence for their new nation of Israel, their doubts must be overcome by faith. Their desire for certainty must be overcome by a comfort with uncertainty. You see, just like so many in our world, so many who went and served in the military, there had to be a comfort with uncertainty. Meaning you didn't know what it was. Nobody knew. How could you know? If there was no never an experience, even within our own country, how did anybody know how these wars would out, uh, outcome, the outcome would be? How did anybody know what any military designed? Of course you have a plan. Of course you have, have something projected. But how do you know that the enemy hasn't got a different plan that's going to stop what you're trying to do? You see, this, this is the same within Christianity. It gets to the point, just like we see with Joshua and the children of Israel. God gave them a promise. I'm giving you the promised land. I'm going to lead you there. But you know, we still have to trust. We still have to trust. Just the same as us today. We can't, just, we can't just let the world determine what we're going to do. We have to stay in the course. Stay focused on what God said to do. You see, it may not be the popular thing. And it's probably not going to be the popular thing. Just like any military maneuver. It may not be the popular thing. I'm sure within the soldiers, even within ranks, there were ones who were not, not all sold out to carry out what, what the leader said. I'm sure there was many who went against what their sergeant had spoken, their corporal had spoken, their captain had spoken, their, their, whoever was leading had spoken. But yet, the ones who decided, you know what, I'm going to trust and I'm going to carry out what I have to do. You see, we're, we're in the same game as far as a Christian. In the same way with Joshua and the children of Israel. They were all counting on God's word to be fulfilled. Just like we are. We have to be counting on God's word to be fulfilled. We can't let someone else determine what we're going to do because God already said here. Here's what I want you to do. And just like with the children of Israel and the the Ark of the Covenant. You know, they set out uh, in the morning, uh, the, the hours to march to the Jordan River. So can you imagine? We're not talking about having ships. We're not talking about having a ferry to get you across the river. We're talking about marching by foot. Okay? And uh, they didn't know the plan. They didn't know what was going to be next. They didn't realize what was there. There was a a great deal of uncertainty, just like any maneuver. There's a great deal of uncertainty. Their parents and grandparents of the children of Israel, they were all there 40 years, wandering in the wilderness, wandering to and fro. They allowed their doubts and fears to immobilize them. That's what happened. That's why they ended up where they did. How about you and me? How comfortable are we with uncertainty. You see, we, we began to, to realize our faith in the moments of uncertainty. What is it now that I actually believe in that will help me get through what I need to go through? That's the mind of a, a veteran. You know, that this nation was moving toward this, the, this uh, river on a military campaign. They didn't know how they were going to get across. I'm sure that's became the closer they got to this river. The question is, where are we going? How are we going to cross? What are we going to do? You see, here's the first statement. If doubt immobilizes us, if doubt immobilizes us, we cannot experience God's solution. You see, when doubt is created, it will mobilize us to carry out and experience what God wants for us. 
Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites, they set out for Shedem and, and went to the Jordan. <clears throat> they were camped there, crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, the priests and the Levites, this is what they were told. You are to move out and follow. Can you imagine us today just trusting somebody who's carrying an Ark of the Covenant? Hey, just follow the Ark. Well, what are we doing? Where are we going? How many days are it going to be? What food are we going to eat? Where are we going to sleep? What's the purpose of this? Can you imagine how the questions begin? Because in our world, it's hard to trust anything anymore, isn't it? You see, he says, To consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. That's in verse 5 of chapter 3. If you want to take a look at there, Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. In verse 6, Joshua spoke to the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. So here, here we find the moment of uncomfortableness. The moment that they had to trust something other than themselves. How did Joshua help his people overcome the force of doubt? How do we overcome the force of doubt? How does any veteran who has served and whoever serving, how do you overcome doubt? Doubt will mobilize a person because fear then creeps in and the more fear someone has, the less active one can be. First, I believe, as I, I want, to, uh, want us to go to chapter four here, Joshua, but the first thing I think that, that helps in, in how Joshua uh, was able to get them to overcome Keep alive the memory of God's activity in our life. Keep alive the memory of God's activity in our life. We've got to draw from the moments that we had experience with God. Let's look at chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. This is what happens here. Joshua called the twelve men. I'm going to read verse 4 as well. Joshua called the twelve men from whom he appointed for the children of Israel, one from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God in the midst of the Jordan, and each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the, the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that as they may be a sign among you, that when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? And then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be a memorial to the children of Israel forever. So again, we see this is an important thing. Remember what happened before. Remember how God got you through. Remember the, the involvement. Remember things. But, but if you don't have that to draw from, how can you remember it? You see why it's so important that we teach our children? You see why it's so important we have our children in God's Word? If we have our children in God's Word, if we are in God's Word, then we have a place to, to go back to and remember. The second thing is sacred traditions should remind that I belong to God. Let's look at chapter 5. Chapter 5 of Joshua. In verse 3. He says, So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the hill, hill of the foreskins. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came to Egypt who were males, all the men of war who died in the wilderness, on the way. After they had come out of Egypt, for the people who came out had been circumcised. But all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness to all the people who were men of war, who came out of Egypt, were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord, to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them 
the land which the Lord had sworn to their fathers that he would give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So can you imagine all this time has gone, 40 years, and now the Lord says it's time for you to go to promised land? Can you imagine what their thoughts were? Okay, we, when does this mean? Does this mean another 40 years? Does this mean tomorrow? Does this mean next week? Does this mean a month? They didn't know yet either, but they had to trust. They had to walk through. They had to remember the traditions. I believe the next one is, God is right here, right now. Amen. And I think that's important for us all to remember, not only in carrying out specific military maneuvers, but for our everyday life. God is right here, right now. And we see in the verses 13 and 14 of uh, chapter 5 here. I want to read that. Chapter, 13, uh, chapter 5, verse 13. I'll read verse 12 as well. Joshua rose up in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. As we were talking, they, they've got the ark of the Lord with them. Then seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually. And they blew their trumpets. And then the armed men went before them, but the rear guard came after them. The ark of the Lord, while the, the priests continued blowing the trumpets, and the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did for six days. So, from a military point of view, is this much of a plan for a maneuver? Is this much of a plan to have a battle won? Not to us as humans, but we have to remember where the source of power is from. They have to remember, and this is why God does what he does. we got to remember his presence is here right now. we got to remember that God is with us if we're trusting him. This plan emphasizes that God is the one who has the power and authority and is sovereign. God has something to do with this plan, and they had to allow God to be involved in this plan so it would be carried out. The soldiers must do something, and what they must do is be obedient. Same as you and me. You know, that that's all falls together. Do you know that? All the Lord asks us to do is be obedient, to trust Him. They got their feet wet before God would knock out the walls. See? Why go through all this? Why couldn't God have just said to them, watch this? Hey, I want you to pay attention. Watch this. You see, what's the point of making the soldiers walk around the city blowing their trumpets? What's the point of doing the things that they did day after day? Can you imagine for six days? How by the sixth day... The grumbling started. Why are we doing this? This is senseless. I can hear people after the first time going around. What's the, what's the use of this? This is senseless. Why are we even doing this? That's why God does what he does. He always separates the wheat from the chaff. He always separates the sheep from the goats. Just like the return of when he comes to call his church home. He's definitely going to separate the sheep and the goats. There will be a clear division between those who have oil in their lamp, ready to meet the Savior, and those who are putting it off and procrastinating. Clearly, what he's doing as well. You see, God never, never, ever will forget your faith. Never. He knows what, what we are. He knows who we are. He knows that the ones that are going to be trustworthy and those who aren't. And I'm sure that's exactly what was happening. 2 Timothy chapter 2. You're going to flip over there with me and close with this. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 4. This is Paul writing. He says, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard, say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. He says, endure the hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. 
No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. You see, that, that's, that's what we're dealing with. The identification of our commanding officer then has to be noticed, doesn't it? Who's our commanding officer? We have to ask ourselves that. Who's our commanding officer? Who is the one in charge of our life? Who is the one that we're going to follow? Who's the one we're going to be obedient to? God. Amen. That's the choice we have to make, isn't it? You see, this is veterans of service today, and this week will be the day that we honor men and women who, who have protected and are protecting our nation. We are grateful for the willingness uh, uh, to serve, uh, uh, their willingness to serve and sacrifice for our nation. And today we want to say thank you for our veterans. We want to say, as we honor and thank families of, of soldiers who have stood by these ones who are serving, spouses, parents, grandparents, uh, friends who have sacrificed with their loved ones, ones who have went over in other countries, overseas, and put in hostile territories, been involved with terrorist acts, been involved with mass shootings, been involved with so many horrific things. We say thank you to all. And, and, and these people have prayed, and I'm sure uh, many times, and, and as we pray many times, asking God to protect our loved ones. And, and uh, I, I'm, I'm seeing that mother, that father, uh, sending their child off to, to the military and, and going to be uh, stationed somewhere else and, and, and thinking of the uncertainty, thinking of what's going to be. Will I ever see my son or my daughter again? Will I ever be able to hug and, 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 and give them a kiss anymore? Will I ever be able to talk to them? Think about all this that goes through one's mind. You see? This is why we need to honor those. We, we are grateful as our church, as a nation, we should be, uh, observe those who have served. And uh, uh, we, we, we ask for God's protection uh, upon them. So at this time, I'm going to ask that, that any veterans who we have here this morning, would you uh, please stand up for us? I know that uh, there's, there's a few that aren't able to be with us today, but I still know we still have quite a few with us. So these, these ones who have served, please stand up. We also, uh, can we ask them to come forward? What do you think? Should I ask them to come forward? Yeah. Okay, come on up, Jenna. <laughs> come on up here and stand in front. We wanna, we wanna make a notice of you all, okay? This, this is uh, important business because uh, just like I mentioned this morning with parents and maybe church affiliation made, made you wrestle within yourself how you should serve or not serve. Come on up here and line up in front and turn around and look at the people. They want to see your beautiful faces. Yeah, come on. <laughs> And we'll, we'll try to give them the glare. Yeah. <laughs> so, how, how about uh, spouses here today? We'll have the spouses. I know there's some here as well. Under spouse, please stand up, spouses, if you can. We won't ask you to come forward. We just want you to be recognized, okay? Yes, give them a big round of applause. Thank you, spouses. How about, uh, how about mothers or fathers that are here that has a child serving, even now or has served? Yes, I know Betty has. Okay, Deborah has. Anybody else have a... Okay. Yes, Joanne has. Or not Joanne. Mimo has. <laughs> Josephine. Anybody else? Okay. These gentlemen up here, if, if they could share with you one thing, I wish they would speak. There was one thing, one thing you took away from serving in the military. What would it be? Just speak it out loud, loud enough, Rick. One thing. Just say one thing. Courage. Courage. Okay. How about you, Gary? About the same thing. Freedom. 
Freedom, courage, okay. How about you, Roy? Freedom. Freedom? Amen. Harry? Pride. Pride, okay, that's good. Pride. Okay, Woody? Okay. Huh? Protection of our country and our families. Okay, protection of our country and our families. How about you, Alan? Faith. Faith, okay. How about you, Larry? Blessing. Blessing. So you see, there, there was something deep inside these men that you see today. There are many others. There's some that's serving. But uh, let's let's give them a big thank you for, for all you did for our country. Amen. 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 standing. I want to pray with all these and all of us together. Think about the ones who are serving. Think about other ones that aren't here. Think about your family that has, has somebody serving even now. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, as we close this time, we are grateful. We are grateful for men and women just like we see here today. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless their life because at some time in their life, they had to stand for this freedom. They had to stand, as we heard this morning, courage, faith, trust, you know, freedom for, for their country, for, for their families. The, 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 the faith that it took, the blessing that it took to serve, and, and, and Lord, the, 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 the determination. We are so grateful for these characteristics that have been displayed in ones who've served. So we ask you to bless them, their families. And Lord, those who are serving even now, we ask your protection upon them. And Lord, may, may you continue to guide our military. May you continue to guide our president, Lord. We have a newly elected, and we just pray that you'll guide him. Guide our governing bodies, Lord. We just ask that they would also remember and be patriotic about what the freedoms we have and your involvement in this country and the men and women who have truly served with the, in their mind the freedom, the pride of their country, the, the courage to continue, the faith that it took to carry out. We pray your hand upon, Lord, all who are serving and have served. So we ask you, Lord, for the families, mother, father, the spouses, the husband, wife, children, be with them all, Lord. It's, it's hard. It's hard for them every day not knowing what's happening. So we pray for your presence. We ask, Lord, that you would help them and give them strength to carry on and persevere. We ask all this in your name, in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Let's give them another round of applause as we get back to the seat. Thank you, gentlemen. Amen. Remain standing as we sing our final hymn. Amen. Amen. Four, another patriotic. I still believe in America, and I still believe Jesus was involved with our country Amen. from the beginning, and we need to keep him there. Amen? Amen. Eight four. Battle him in the Republic.
Amen. Everybody wants to pray for our country. Continue to do so. Amen. We believe. We believe. There's greater things coming. Amen? Amen. God needs to be with us. Let's close in prayer this morning. Our Father, the chart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day, and may the Lord be with you.